Yates and Hain with important partnership as Warwickshire fight back. Day one had been an impressive one for Hampshire as Ian Holland and Anurin Donald batted the side to maximum batting points, putting them in control in Southampton. The Bears bowlers had toiled. Just six wickets fell on the first day, Warwickshire struggling to make inroads until the closing stages, but they'd start day two knowing they'd get the chance to emulate their hosts on a good wicket. But first they'd had to pick up the final four wickets, and that was no mean feat. Lewis McManus would join Gareth Berg at the crease, Hampshire targeting 500. Their partnership would last just four overs, Berg bowled by Hannon Dolby for 15 as he played around a straight one. Barker would stick with McManus and the pair would see Hampshire past 500. Patel once again on the receiving end as Barker bludgeoned back-to-back -back boundaries. The total continued to tick over before Ben Mike picked up his first Warwickshire wicket, Barker well caught by Hose at deep mid-wicket. His departure would signal the beginning of the end. Abbott, the next man to go, trapped LBW for one off the first ball of the next over. Stone now one away from a fifer on his return from injury. That would come two balls later. Fidel Edwards removed by the England man, caught by Yates at backward point. A real improvement on their performance in recent weeks and a daunting bar set for Warwickshire. And even the most consistent of opening partnerships can feel the pressure. Rhodes out just before lunch, caught behind for nine off the bowling of Abbott. That meant they went into lunch at 15 for one, a less than ideal start. Yates and Sibley would look to reconcile, digging in as the innings got back underway. But Abbott would strike again, the informed Sibley caught in the covers by Russo for 16. Yates and Hayne would offer more resistance and the Bears number three grew in confidence, accumulating runs as the pair took their time. They'd make it through to T at 90 for two, Yates just one shot from his 50. The 19-year-old academy graduate's maiden half century would come at the restart, a moment to remember for the Solihull born number three. Hayne would follow, his own 50 brought up with a single off Abbott. On this evidence, it's easy to see why Warwickshire have high hopes for this pair and they continue to show their worth. Yates would fall agonisingly short of a maiden first-class century, caught at short mid-wicket off the bowling of Organ, the third wicket partnership worth 142 runs. Hayne was there at the end of the day, Warwickshire 198 for three in reply to Hampshire's first innings. Day one had belonged to Hampshire, but this second day of play was Warwickshire's. They hadn't put on the same monster total as their hosts, but they'd built their innings well and lost just three wickets. It looks like the home side's bowling attack will have to work hard on day three, but with the prospect of the follow-on still looming over their visitors, they'll be confident scoreboard pressure is on their side.